Hey everybody, it's Mary Starter here, and today's Bible study topic is on severing the bonds that no longer serve you. So today I wanted to address a profound aspect of our spiritual and emotional well-being, and that's severing soul ties. So let me know down in the chat what you believe soul ties are. Um, I believe that soul ties can be deep. They are often sometimes invisible connections between our souls and other people, places, and things. While some soul ties are beneficial and life-giving, others can hinder our spiritual growth and personal freedom. I want to explore how to identify and sever those bonds that no longer serve us, aligning ourselves more closely with God's purpose. First, we must understand the difference between a positive soul tie and a harmful soul tie. So soul ties are connections that bind our souls with others. This can be positive, like um, in 1 Samuel 18 and 1, after David had finished talking with Saul, Jonathan became one with spirit with David and he loved him as himself, okay? So just like the positive bond between Jonathan and David, you can have a soul tie that is nurturing, that is humbling, that is beneficial and helpful. Or you can have a negative soul tie. Um, like in 2 Corinthians 6.14, it states, Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? So, a negative soul tie stems from unhealthy relationships or experiences. Positive ties can be nurturing and strengthening, while negative ties can be draining and detrimental. Okay? So, we want to identify the harmful soul ties that often stem from different things like relationships marked by manipulation, control, unresolved conflict. There are many different types of soul ties we can have in our lives. I want to take a second and go over the many forms and types of harmful or negative soul ties. We can start with your relationships, whether that's romantic relationships, friendships, or family relationships, or excuse me, family dynamics. We never want to put ourselves in situations where the relationship we are in or the relationship we are a part of is to our detriment you know it brings us harm it, it causes chaos it brings negativity to our livelihood you don't want that if those type of things are connected to a relationship that is considered a harmful soul tie you have parental and child relationships where some parents might be abusive some children might be manipulative if you have certain uh, parental and child relationships that are not fulfilling or bring chaos and destruction those are harmful and negative soul ties you have mentorships and workplace connections how many times have you been in a situation where you took guidance from someone and they led you astray or you thought someone was a certain way that's guiding you and giving you advice but you later on realize they are not who they claim to be or they are you know not someone that you want to mirror or follow in life um, you have your social media interactions that could be negative soul ties you could be um, experiencing bullying and harassing and negativity coming from different social media platforms that you might actually engage in or be on the reciprocating end of which is not always great right um, you have past traumatic experiences where maybe you there was an event that you encountered that left you scarred or hurt or damaged those things are harmful soul ties because we experience them and we don't necessarily let those things go. Um, addictions, anything from drugs and alcoholism, porn, things that 
we cannot control but end up controlling us molestation how many times have we experienced people even at a young age that have been touched inappropriately and now they are full functioning adults but they are still not able to get past that blockage of what happened to them when they were younger or being touched inappropriately domestic violence sometimes we encounter relationships and just um, situations in, in general where we experience physical abuse and there might be a block that we are not able to get past because we feel like it's going to happen again or we are connected to people who again cause those physical acts and who have become harmful towards us on us or around us um, you have your unresolved conflicts how many times have you encountered something like uh, maybe getting cut off while you're driving on the road and how many times have you gotten home and then days weeks months later you reenact that in your head or it replays in your head about like what you could have did or how mad you were when that person cut you off those are negative and harmful soul ties that we don't let go that consume us that control our minds you have your financial dependencies and your familiar dependencies no one wants to be solely dependent on another person for their livelihood to the point where anything that is or is not given is at a detriment to your life or put your life on hold or it's so familiar but yet so negative you feel like it's impossible to leave those are dependencies that are harmful and negative you have your grief from miscarriages and challenges from birth defects oftentimes mothers feel that negative soul tie where they cannot release the fact that a miscarriage or a birth defect was not their fault or nothing that they could have prevented or did anything about um you have your attachment to unborn children and premature deaths so a lot of times with unborn children or just premature premature deaths within certain adults you have people who are connected to them and feel some sense of shame or some sense of defeat and grief because they feel like maybe they caused it or they could have prevented their death in some way um you have your words of rejection and you have your emotional trauma related to things of your childhood too many times we experience many grown adults experiencing setbacks in life because things that happen in our childhood we are yet to get past or we have yet to confront the people that said certain things or we have yet to overcome the things that someone has said or did in our childhood that caused us to be negative or delayed or not have or to go without or to be who we are now that we might not want to be okay so those were many negative soul ties that we just went over i'm pretty sure there's even more if i take the time to really sift through the bible a lot more but those were just a few that i was able to identify right off the back um now we're going to go over positive and healthy soul ties you have your mutual respect and admiration relationships where both people feel a strong sense of respect and admiration for one another okay you have your unconditional love and acceptance where again both people feel a sense of of love unconditionally and accept you for who you are um, you have the feeling of inspiration and being energized there are going to be some places some relationships and some people that actually inspire you and bring you energy good energy and um they bring you an energy in a sense where you want to get up and do something good for others or do something good and positive for yourself um you also had the feeling of comfort and being secure again that can come with 
people, places, and things. It doesn't have to necessarily be a relationship, but when you have a soul tie uh, connected to a person, place, or thing, it makes you feel comforted and secure, and it brings about peace. Those are good and healthy soul ties, okay? Mutual learning. When you are connected to something or someone that you both can learn something and share and experience a healthy, loving, or healthy, positive experience, those are healthy soul ties. Now that we have identified what soul ties are and the different types of negative versus positive soul ties, it's now up to us to examine ourselves and to examine our lives and see what we are connected to that may not serve us any longer. Okay, we need to begin to examine our heart and examine our relationships and identify any ties that feel unhealthy or burdensome. We need to pray for God's revelation and guidance in understanding all these connections. Psalms 139 states, Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. We need to identify what these connections are so we can confess and repent. 1 John 1, 9 states, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all righteousness. Listen, confess any sin or unhealthy attachments associated with these soul ties. Because when you repent and you ask for God's cleansing and healing in these areas of your life, you become made new, right? Once we identify what our troubled areas are or things that we have attachments to, it's easier to just confess it to the Lord because then we can start the healing process. We can begin to confess and repent and then forgive and release. Matthew 6, 14 through 15 states, for if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your father, excuse me, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your father will not forgive your sins. We need to forgive those who have hurt us and we need to release them from our hearts because the act of forgiveness is crucial in breaking the hold of negative soul ties. In order to forgive and release, you got to set boundaries, set clear boundaries with individuals who have been a part of unhealthy soul ties. You need to seek counseling and support to heal from the emotional and spiritual impact of these connections. Change your atmosphere, change your support system, change who you are around. Galatians 5.1 states, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. If we don't forgive and release, we hold ourselves bondage to those negative soul ties, okay? Once we release, we can establish new boundaries and seek healing and then we can finally embrace our new beginnings. Isaiah 43, 18 through 19 states, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. You do not perceive it. So we must embrace the freedom and a new beginning God is offering us. We have to allow him to establish new healthy connections that align with his will for our life. We have to move forward in the confidence that we are free from the bondages that once held us back. As we identify our soul ties and we begin to sever those soul ties that no longer serve us, let us remember to trust in God's power to heal and restore. We need to embrace the freedom he provides and walks us confidently through in the newness of life. We need to guide and strengthen ourselves so that we can break free from the past and step into the fullness 
of his purpose for our lives. I'm going to end this out in a prayer. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we come before you today asking your guidance and strength. Reveal to us the soul ties that are hindering our growth and well-being. Grant us the courage to sever these bonds and the grace to forgive and release those who have hurt us. Lord, heal our hearts and restore us to wholeness. We trust in your power to set us free and to lead us into a future filled with your love and purpose. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. I hope this Bible study time provides a clear and empowering message on severing harmful soul ties.